Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to this week's Talking Stick Show. So today we're going to give you the roadmap of how to ignite your passion and the road to freedom and what it takes. So I'd like to welcome the guests this evening. We have the human AI. We have David Ellis to the show. <laughs> hello, David. Hey, everybody. How are we doing today, David? Oh, you know, um, buried in code, but I am okay. <laughs> yes, good to have you on. And we have the incredible host from Unscripted. We have the uh, Amy Kruzak. Hello. Hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. Welcome. How are you, sister? Sister's doing good. Good, Sister's... good. Good, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, so, good topic, good topic. Yes, I thought of it, yeah, it, it's been a very busy week for me, and it, a few days ago, I just thought, igniting passion and how important that is and for all of those who can't find passion so this show is going to help you come out of the own misery zone come into a way where you can actually feel freedom again so let's start we'll bring david in so passion what does passion mean for you david passion is a, um a yearning a yearning for something more than your present state of affairs it's a yearning that is felt it is something that is embedded inside so when we say passion and people have co-opted the wood in basically relationships or sexuality but passion can be something like a passion for art a passion for a number of different things i think that when people think about passion they think about oh that's what the other people do the mad people no passion is something that you should have it's what's keeping you alive right now actually your first passion that you felt when the doctor slapped you on your ass as a baby was the passion for life to live mm -hmm. so everybody has it some people have lost it some people have buried it some people wondering what the hell is he talking about but we're going to get into that right <laughs> yes we are so amy what does passion mean yeah. to you wow this was good um i had to think about it um for me throughout my life i would say that passion has mm, a determination to it and it to me it works in conjunction with spirit and my soul so when i um and i always remember the line from the shaman's death that andrew wrote it's the passion what was it the passion spark mm -hmm. so i feel like I've always had, we've always had, we all have this passion spark within. It's like this feels like a thread that we carry with us. And then that determination kind of like builds on manifesting kind of with our will. It's like a, it's like, I feel like it's like a, a determination of the will. Yes. Yeah. And that's it. And so as we grow and like David said, you get spanked on the ass when you're a baby. <laughs> it's, <laughs> But for me, it's the, the like the evolution of yourself, but in a world where you are kind of like stumped, your growth stumped, you're controlled, the school system's there. It's like the passion is there when you're an inner child. You have that ever-present moment of being in the moment, being the innocence, being in that passion frequency. But all mm -hmm. of a sudden, these responsibilities start coming onto us, one of them having a job, one of them having to grow up too fast. So you find so many people, and I'm sure loads of people listening, you grow up quick, you have to go into work, but 10 years, 20 years on in that work, you realize, wow, I, there's no passion in this anymore. There's no passion in the work I do. And these shows are to help you find passion again. Even if you're working at a job where you don't like, you can allow the frequencies to be flipped and enjoy it. You really can. It comes down to a choice. Mm -hmm. Well, I have two things to say to that. First of all, uh, the funny thing about uh, um, passion is that it changes the different inflections of it. So like that first day you stepped on that job, you're like, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to make some money. I'm going to make something of myself. Five years in, you may have a, you, you, the passion becomes a little bit more um, squeezed down to, let's say, a project that you're doing at your job and so on. The problem with people is that passion takes energy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people become internally lazy, both in the spiritual, like there's a whole bunch of people who step on the spiritual path. They're passionate about um, expansion, exp evolution, right? Mm -hmm. 
But after four or five years then, they lose the passion for it. And then all of a sudden, you see them, you know, they go on these shows and they say the same old things the same old time. You got to keep changing your passion. You got to keep changing. Mm -hmm. You got to keep reiterating, reinventing yourself. And if you don't do that, things, um, they fall into a certain kind of monotony. And there's some people who get the passion kicked out of them when they meet their first roadblock. You know the type, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes. Uh, I started on something, but there's an obstacle. So mm -hmm. I don't want to figure the obstacle out. But the obstacle is there to really utilize that energy that you are cultivating on. Okay? Like, I've had several obstacles in the last week alone. Okay? <laughs> Right, but I'm developing um, different kinds of passion, and no one says that you only have to have one passion. You can have many, mm -hmm. okay. But most people try to occupy the space of one, and I think, I think a lot of people tend to um, tend to lose their passion due to the fact that it takes energy to continue this 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 concept of of being impassioned about something. So let, let's talk, have a look in relationships then, because usually the start of a relationship, two people have fi find that passion, don't they? Where they fall in love, the passion's there for the relationship. But mm -hmm. a few years down the, line, uh, down the line, the passion disappears. So what can we advise for those people who have lost that passion and how they can regain it again? In relationships? Yes. Hmm. You see, it comes back to the same thing. It requires energy and work, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at relationships. There are two phases of the relationship. The part of the relationship where the person depends... Okay, there are three, I should say. Um, because the Greeks actually had this classified, right? At the yes. bottom of the ladder was eros, right? Which is the sexual love between a man and a woman, a, a romantic love between man and woman. At the higher level, there was phileos, right? which is the familiar love between family members, right? And um, there's a little section there in there for friends as well. And there's also at the top something called agape, which is unconditional love, universal unconditional love, the kind of love we talk about in spirituality, right? Um, so here's the thing that's happening with regard to um, people. They enter on the eros level and they never get past it. So that's what I mean when passion has to change. So let's say a man meets a woman in a bar. Okay, let's not go to a bar. <laughs> yes, I don't drink. A man meets a woman, right? And they're like, they're, they're, they're like, they can't get enough of each other, right? Right? Physically, the woman is appealing. Physically, the man is appealing, right? Um, there's a, there's this, this um, passionate, you think fire and so on. You're seeing flames whenever you see that person. That person is hot to you, okay? <laughs> Funny thing about fire, you need to keep feeding it or else it goes out real quick. Okay? Yes. <laughs> yes. Right? Right? The fact that you describe the person as hot or the person as smoking or whatever else, you need <laughs> to keep feeding the fire or else it will go out real quick. And you don't feed a fire the same kind of energy. The fire needs oxygen. It needs something to feed on. Right? Good. Mm -hmm. If you do not keep changing, then that fire will go out. Here's the thing. This is where you step up into the familiar level where you feel the person as family. Okay? I'm going to say this. So in a, in a normal relationship, the first time you meet somebody, um, it's kind of parasitical. You're not thinking, what can I add to this person's life? A lot of people don't think that way. And I want you all to hear me, for those of you all in the audience. Right, because I, I, this is going to turn into an argument real quick. Right, you're going to say, "Oh no, no, I don't think that." Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You're thinking, "How can this person? How can this person? Um, how can this person um, make me happier?" It's parasitical. Yes. When you step up into the familial filios, you're thinking, "Gee, how can I help this person?" And you know it when it changes. And then your passion lies in making this person happy, right? But if you stay at that level, you become f a family. And the part that's below it, the, the sexual part, 
goes out the window. You know, you find yourself having sex. You used to do it like three times a day. Now you have having sex like once a month. Once a year, month. on a birthday, on a yeah, birthday. you all are down to those kinds of figures. <laughs> right? All right? And don't, don't put your fingers at me. I'm single. I'm good. Okay? Right? So Andrew's single. Everybody's single. All right? I don't, I don't give a shit. Right? But you're down. Some of y'all are down to these kinds of figures, right? Um, and so here's the problem: if you don't step up from the just the familiar level, this person is my family, to the uh, agape. This is the spiritual level where you see the person unconditionally. Then this is how the sex changes. It changes from parasitical. I need this person now. To I want to make this person happy. So I recorp refigure reconfigure my mind to make this person happy and at the top level this is an ascension level where every um hug every sex act every um time you have intercourse is an ascension it takes you from one place to another place do you understand so yes. guys that's how passion changes that's my take on it yes so <laughs> Amy, a question for you. So, yes, source connection and, and God connection. What's that got to do with passion? Has that got any connection to it at all? Well, for me, it feels like it does. <laughs> yeah. It feels like it 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 has this connection of. Um, I feel like that's how my life has been, kind of, kind of like following this these passions not really realizing well what's the where is this going to take me because spirit has led me or my soul has led me to and then you come to that point and you're like what i you know i can't even imagine how this this came about because it was my passion within that i kind of didn't know about and then it was blossomed with spirit and my soul helping along the way yeah beautiful David, yeah. same question to you. What source connection got to do with passion? Does it connect? Yes, it does, because all passion is trying to lead you to source, whether you realize it or not. I made the example at the beginning of this broadcast, when the doctor slapped you on your ass, your first passion was the will to live an experience. That was your first passion. Or else, if it wasn't a passion, we wouldn't be. You wouldn't be listening to this broadcast right now, okay? <laughs> you, you, you would be in the afterlife, okay? <laughs> All right. When the doctor slapped you on your ass and you made that that that, that first wail and you screamed and so on, that is the scream of somebody who wants to live. Yes. That mm -hmm. that first cry, somebody wants to live, and so every every kind of passion that you feel, every time you feel that spark, it's trying to lead you to source right it is your responsibility when you feel that spark within to feed it because that spark is trying to lead you to experience trying to lead you to expansion and i think a lot of people when it is that they don't have that kind of passion that kind of spark and so on and they do not know what to do eventually what happens is that they 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 get into this kind of monotonous kind of vibration stagnation okay can you imagine that you decided i am going to i don't know pick up a new hobby or i'm going to go a step into spirituality you have that passion you have that yearning the first time you step into the meditation center the yoga center the spiritual center the psychic surgery center you feel you feel it and I just want to, I, I want to make this very personal to people. Okay. How many of you in the audience right now still feel Christmas in the air? You know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. How many of y'all yes. still feel it? I mean, feel it in the air. It's like a smell. It's like a, it's like a thing. How many of y'all are still feeling that? Because a lot of people have, don't feel it anymore. Because they have kids, you got to buy gifts to the kids. It's a hassle, so they don't feel it. It's a big commercial enterprise, right? How many of mm -hmm. y'all have lost the sense of wonder when y'all were kids, yeah. and y'all were playing, and y'all were the magicians? How many of y'all right. still believe in real magic? Yes, yes, yes. 
<laughs> like, and, yeah. and looking into that feeling of Christmas, and I do get that fee like when I see an advert or something, it is that remembrance of the the memory, the experience in the past where I was passionate about Christmas, and that memory and all that Christmas advert or whatever comes on, it fills me. It does feel like passion because it reminds me of how passionate I was about Christmas in the past. But I don't let it defeat me. And a lot of people, they get so stuck in the programs. And that for me, it, on my journey at the start of this, uh, there was a point where I awakened and I was passionate about it. But the passion mm -hmm. disappeared after a year. And I had to solely, re like David said, solely create the wood, put the, the coal together and actually put effort into fueling the fire. And this is where so many people miss miss it in spirituality is because they start the passions there that's all great but they realize how fucked up they are or how many programs or some work they need to do and the passion disappears you have to add more fuel more fuel and more fuel it's not an easy journey to find passion you've got to be courageous you've got to be confident with yourself and mm -hmm. i've been there i've not had passion in my spiritual journey but i kept going and going and going and going back to those points where i wasn't passionate i was traumatized or I was depressed and healing those. And it just completely changed my journey where now I see the inner work as passion. I don't see it as a chore, like meditating, guided meditation, contract revocations, floats, all of that. Before I was kind of like a little bit, oh, it's a bit of a chore, but it's not a chore. It's just innately source connection, that flow of passion always coming through me. And at times I do feel like shit. I do have my shit days where the passion's not mm. there and I need time out. And that's another thing, isn't it? Important to have time out to yourself, relax, rejuvenate. Yeah, yeah. I uh, honestly, the reason why I made an allusion to real magic is that let's say that you're having, I have been to numerous gatherings, okay, where people were practicing some ritual or another, okay. Was this a black magic gatherings, David? <laughs> no, it wasn't any black magic gatherings. <laughs> was that what the, you learned? It wasn't any black magic oh, No, 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 no. <laughs> there was no cocaine or prostitutes either. Yeah, no reference there. No, um, I have been to gatherings where people were practicing some form of ritual. In order to perform this ritual, you have to reach. You have to reach from the inside, Okay there is a density to people right now magic is lost in people and i say i'm not talking about the spiritual people because whenever we make these kinds of of comments we talk about spiritual people forget about the spiritual people go down the road find yourself a random dude a random dude and you walk up to that random dude and says do you feel the magic in the air do you feel it do you feel it random dude is going to look at you like no, but I do know the number of a good asylum for you, <laughs> right? 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 He's going. <laughs> I do know the number of a good asylum. <laughs> it's like, like, do you feel it? When was the last time you sat down? And a lot of people don't get this right because we try to teach a lot of spiritual people this construct. So, for those of you who are wondering how you can actually contact passion in yourself, you gotta stop all that density that you're carrying. There's a bunch of dross on you that is locking you down and i'm talking to everybody in the chat i'm talking to everybody in who's going to be listening to this broadcast past present future okay when you there's a there's a density that is on you let me tell you what the density is it's that traffic jam that's in your head right now if you're listening to me that traffic jam of concerns and motivations and all the things that you have to do and all so on. It's a traffic jam in your head. It is the belief that things are not going your way, right? These things are locking you up, right? It's locking you up. And so here's what is happening to you. The thing that is making you you, that passion spark that we're talking about, is buried it is buried. And the only way that you're going to get free of it is if you stop, get rid of the garbage first. Okay? Mm -hmm. Get rid of the garbage first. That's number one. Here's the second tip I would give you. You see how Dale and I and Amy are talking right now? It is very, very important to have people around you 
that could take garbage off of you at any point in time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How very, do you, very important. Well, here's a question then, because for me, taking the garbage off, it took someone else, like you said, the community around back mm -hmm. in back in the day when I first started my journey to take the garbage off. But my passion was either I it's almost like the Yoda quote, do or do not. There is no try. Mm -hmm. It's either it's either do this or do not do it. But I felt that I had to do it. So I went with my passion. But it did take somebody else to do that. So how do people pay attention to that subtle, subtle thing to make it expand even, to make their passion even expand even greater than what they know? That's a good question, Amy. Um, honestly, Dale, the first thing I would say is fear is going to be your biggest barrier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, um, Amy, you, you, you had fear on board a lot yeah. of the times. Yeah. Right. It took somebody throwing you off the cliff every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> it, right? did. It, took some, it took a friend to keep throwing you off the cliff every once in a while. When you have fear on board, passion does not live around fear. Right. Passion, fear is like the water that you pour on the fire of passion because fear will lock you up and stop you from doing what is necessary to get rid of it first and it will stop you from doing other things. Like people who are in relationships, they have a lot of fear on board. They mm -hmm. do. They don't want to do certain things and as a result of that, it locks them up completely. Like it outs you. Okay. Everybody wants to talk about that they are a flame. So I, when it comes to opening your 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 passion, that 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 internal yearning for something more than the self, my suggestion would be for those of you who are um, afraid, you got to sit down, you got to think of all the things that are stopping you from being the complete you. Then you get yourself some friends who are going to tell you, hi, come with me to the edge of the cliff and throw you off the cliff. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right? Sorry. Not sorry. Okay? Because here's the thing. Some of us are going to be very, it's going to be very hard for us to do that. Okay? Right? I see somebody in the chat asking a question. Um, yeah, I could be talking to you too. Right? <laughs> which means... <laughs> <laughs> Which means, like, as an example, if you have a passion, and as an example, and the passion is singing, if you have fear, if you have worries on board, if you have fear and if you have worries on board, then you're not going to sing. So, if you have mm -hmm. a passion that is anything that you need to be. I One of the things that I absolutely love about people is that the voice tells you everything, okay? When somebody is free, their voice is free. When somebody is not, they're talking, but no voice is coming out. You see the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when you're saying this, David, and, and the question you asked, Amy, it makes me think how much people's passions blocked by other people's expectations, projections on what they want them to be. And a lot of people grow up losing the passion because people judge them or they're scared of being themselves. The, a lot of people go through this where they have friends who aren't on the spiritual journey and they want to go on the spiritual journey, but they're afraid to go on the journey because of what people think of them. And this is going back to regular purification. And like we just talked about how important that is to actually spend time with your body understand what's in you understand what's going through you and actually use items like sage or salt many different variations where you can actually start feeling yourself again because that's what passion is it's feeling the raw spirit the raw fuel which connects you to the life and a lot of people are so fucked up because it's like they just have all of this baggage in the spine they hold on to people's stuff and you go to do a soul surgery on someone and you're like holy fuck all you do is just take on people's shit. How, no wonder why you can't figure out who the fuck you are because all you're doing is holding people on your back 
mm -hmm. helping the person who doesn't need to be helped, being the martyr, being the zealot. So I think that's a, a big one, isn't it? Having other people's shit and being able to detach from those those idiots who don't want you to grow, who are jealous of you and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, Dale, that's a very good point. And yeah. I want to add to your point there. Um, for the healers in this chat who are listening to this chat, you know your passion can out your own passion. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this. Let's say you're a healer, right? You want to heal the entire planet everywhere you go, right? You're healing. You're, you're reconfiguring souls that are, that are disembodied. You're seeing the souls and you're trying to help them. And then you get into your clinic and you're helping the souls that are in your clinic that are fully embodied souls that are experiencing barriers. And you, you're passionate about this and you've passioned yourself into a passionless, passionless <laughs> existence. <laughs> explain that, explain oh, that one. Yeah. Explain. Go, explain. Because if you have a fire, one of the ways to out a fire is to make a fire around it and absorb all the energy from the fire that's inside of it. Ah, and yeah. it <laughs> yes. Okay. That's a typical firefighter technique. It happens to, to, to a bunch of healers that I know. Like, I want to heal the whole planet, right? You are one being, you are one battery, and you need to chill to hell out, all right? Just sit down and think, I can't do this all by myself, and then resolve yourself to making healers out of everybody else that you meet, and then you spread it like that, okay? Think of fire, okay? Mm -hmm. Because that fire that you have inside will consume you, okay? Mm -hmm. Because when passion is taken to its extreme, it consumes the individual, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Remember that crazy ex-girlfriend in college or crazy ex-boyfriend in college? You all had lots of, uh, of passionate mm -hmm. sex and so on, and then you all had to break up because you had to move, and he lost his goddamn mind. That's what I mean when passion <laughs> consumes the <laughs> mind. Right, it consumes the mind, consumes the body, consumes whatever else. So, for those of you who are overextending yourself in the passionate, we want to urge caution. But you want to get into the ways to ignite passion. Well, yeah. let's get into some so, some general tips and tricks. Okay, can, can I just uh, add yeah. a, little, a little bit here? Was uh, it reminded me of, of a, a quite a character I see quite a lot, and I saw go through my spiritual path is those people who awaken so quick and they become practitioners straight away without doing mm -hmm. any work. And they're so passionate and I see them and I know what they're going to do. And like, they, they've got an ego up. They've got a judgment on you. They think they're better than you. And, but they're I'll lost. I'll you on my table <laughs> shortly. <laughs> they're, they're lost in the bliss. And no matter what you say to them, they don't listen. Then I know for a fact, eight months down the line, they'll break apart and they'll come to us for a session or they'll they'll give up and say right i'm done like that's a huge thing i see over and over again in the spiritual world mm. yeah yeah mm. um, everybody right. wants to heal the world right go ahead yeah uh, no <laughs> when you were when you were talking about that i thought of the um word for passion like it would be a focus mm -hmm. kind of like it would be like what are you willing to what is your will to focus on it would be like um that keeps you moving forward because if it doesn't keep you moving forward then maybe you pick the wrong passion that can be too yes and all passions have a shadow side as an example yeah. the jehovah's witness knocking at your door is very passionate about religion <laughs> <They are>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so the jehovah's witness knocking at your door is very passionate about religious religious uh, matters and so when you answer the door the jehovah's witness is going to try to make you into a jehovah's witness which is not necessarily such a bad thing but they in their own way are trying to heal the yeah. world right yeah. there are some spiritual people who are spiritual jehovah's witnesses i kid you not all right and they they don't go door to door but they but they're no fun at a family gathering you know what i mean so <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a, a family gathering, when you are passionate about something, there is temperance in, in that, right? Because you want that fire to burn for the long haul. Yeah. You see people who are into spirituality for 20 years down the line. How do they keep it going? 
okay? Because they must face the roadblocks. They must plateau at some mm -hmm. stages and so on. Because after a while, you get to understand that you got to change stuff up. You absolutely have to change stuff up. If I was only practicing meditation alone for 20 years, boy, I would be less abashed about it, okay? But look at what I have done over the last 20 years. I started doing meditation, right, um, when I was very, very, very young, okay? With probably too young, actually, now that I think about it, right? I started doing meditation when I was very, very young. And then I thought, oh, there must be a level under, oh, above this. So I started learning hypnotherapy and hypnosis. And so I studied hypnosis, okay? And then I decided I'm going to try different kinds of meditation, okay? Because each one of them has a flavor to them and they, each one of them has a unique side effect. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And not being satisfied with that, I've decided I'm going to learn how to manipulate brainwaves. Yay! Right? <laughs> so I, I added technology. In, <laughs> I added technology inside the whole construct, right? And then yeah. somebody invented the Lucia light. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Yes, frontal cerebral cortex reintegration. Okay, right? And I'm like, and I'm now practicing, or I'm like, I'm all over it. I'm like, I'm with the binaural beats and whatever else, right? But the endemic passion is it changed over time. Okay, so right now I am, well, Amy's actually helping me up there, right? <laughs> we are manipulating brainwave capacity. Yes, Amy has a very interesting voice, guys. <laughs> very interesting voice, right? And um, that voice would not have been a voice if somebody didn't throw you off a cliff, right? <laughs> just saying that, just saying. <laughs> That's true. Right? That voice wouldn't have been a voice. And you see how passion connects. If you have passion, you also have the law of attraction on your side. For those mm -hmm. magicians inside here, you cannot practice pa magic without passion. You can't. I'm going to say this like three times for the people in the back. You cannot practice magic or manifestation without passion. You can't. You can't practice magic without manifestation. Okay? And you can't practice manifestation without passion because it is your yearning for the thing that you're looking for that is going to attract it back to you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. And that's where the voice comes in, because if you cannot spell, literally and figuratively spell, then you can't bring anything into your reality. So passion is the attractor. Well, it's the like passion attracted him to Andrew Botsis. Andrew Botsis, his passion attracted a whole bunch of other people. Our passion attracted us. That's how we're sitting on this panel together, right? We have something in common. We have a similar passion we attracted each other into each other's reality. This is not happenstance. This is the movement of the universe. You guys watching this show, y'all have a passion. Y'all may be encased in fear and stuff like that, but y'all have a passion. So you're watching the show so that we can tell you to get off your ass and get, <laughs> get with the passion. Okay? So, uh, yeah. uh, so uh, something to add here would be for those listening, do you, asking yourself that question am i truly passionate about my journey when i do the work on myself am i smiling or is it a chore for me those are some of the questions you really have to go through and dig deep within yourself and if you are getting that I'd, i've got no passion anymore you've got to understand where the passion disappeared from you where the uh, source disconnection happened in your life a lot of majority of the time people lose a passion and can't find it because they've been tra in trauma Trauma mm -hmm. is one of the biggest stoppages of people finding mm -hmm. themselves. It's like a big block. It's like just a, a big deny of who you are. Um, so something, do you want to add to that, Amy, going into that? Yeah, I would like to add that it feels for me passion. You have to lead with your actions. You have to rise above those excuses that you tell yourself mm -hmm. so subtly that the action moves you forward because I was thinking about the word passion and the word passes in there and passes more like um, progress or make one's way, you know? So even dissecting that word, it feels like take action. 
Yes. Not the excuses. They can overrun you. You can just get, uh, yeah, I'm going to make an excuse. I can't. I don't have time. Whatever excuse you make. Arguing you know? for your limitation. As yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And we all know them. <laughs> Are you going to do some work? You're going to do some work on yourself. Why don't you have a day off today and look after yourself? You haven't right. been in a few years. Oh no, I don't have time. <laughs> right. I, do not I still have, have that. Right. And I still yes. have a little of that. But yeah. I have a conversation with myself. You know. Yes. Yes. That's important to me, mm-hmm. and I do it. I think when you, when you're trying to ignite passion, once again, the first thing is to stop and acknowledge the fear and all the roadblocks that are in your way that are keeping you in a state of density understand that as long as you remain in that state of density nothing metaphysical nothing expansive is going to happen to you okay it is literally you're a rock and there's a little spark of energy inside there Mm -hmm. okay And so the first thing is to acknowledge it. A lot of people don't even get to that stage. It's like Alcoholics Anonymous. You have to acknowledge there's a problem before you can work on the problem. The first rule of Alcoholics Anonymous, right? You got to acknowledge that there's a problem before you work on the problem. So how many of you who are listening to this broadcast are willing to acknowledge that you are living in states of density? Because one of the things that people have a problem with when trying to ignite passion is the faking of themselves. Denial, denial, denial. Okay. How many of you are watching CNN still? MSNBC, Fox News. Trying to take yourself out of density. Social media is an encaser. Okay. Now, granted, you may be watching this on social media, granted, <laughs> but social media <laughs> encases you in a world of shit because you are living on the next hit from whatever validation source that you're having, right? Somebody is going to do this or somebody is going to do that or whatever on social media. So my suggestion to you all respectfully is when you are trying to ignite passion, go back to default state where social media doesn't reach, where your family members do not judge, where the people around you, your friends and so on, do not poison you. Depoison yourself and realize, oh shit, I'm supposed to be doing something, but I forgot. Oh, right, I was supposed to be taking over the world. Right, how did I get (laughs) derailed? (laughs) Right, (laughs) right, how did I get derailed? All of these things are encasing you guys and I my first suggestion is to remove it. So acknowledge that you are living in a state of addiction and a lot of addiction to to drama and barriers and so on. Once you get rid of that state, the second thing is to find yourself because you've lost yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that sounds so. That sounds so corny, even <laughs> it I like work is solid, <laughs> that, David. <laughs> that sounded so corny. Let me break it down to the yeah. <laughs> right, because that sounded corny as hell. When somebody <laughs> says to you, find yourself, what they mean is that there was a you that predated all the crap that is all that stuff. I ask people prior to 2020, you know what happened in 2020 with this, you know global issue that we had over the last three years remember yourself in 2013 are you the same person now right you remember when you used to go over to your your parents house or your your dad's house you're having barbecues and stuff like that and you just messing around um if you remember who you were before all the you know the um barriers and all that stuff and all the the COVID stuff and you 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 were wearing a mask and so on. Are you different now? Are you? Are you different? Because if you can't remember who you were, that happy go lucky person who was in the clubs on the beach, right? <laughs> Having hanging out with friends, 
right? Yes, Amy, I know you're the same person because you have a, like a, your, your Amy social life is better than every one of ours. <laughs> right? Anyway, I'm, outing, I'm putting you out there. <laughs> you she has a better social life than everybody else in, in this entire chat room, right? So um, if you were that kind of person, if you were that kind of person that was carefree, and do you feel it now or do you feel a weight, this invisible weight, acknowledge the weight, acknowledge the weight that's on you right now because the only way you're going to get rid of it is if you acknowledge it because you're just going day to day and you need to stop. And that's why it's yeah. important to get help, go see someone who can take a look at you and give you some advice and when they give you that advice, don't get triggered by it. Actually listen to the information you're receiving. And that's one of my biggest growths came to me when I asked for help and I asked for people around me to help me because of my ego didn't want it back at the time. It's about being honest with yourself. And if you're listening and you say you have a spiritual journey now and you don't go see a healer or you don't go see a hypnotherapist, counselor, whatever, I feel like you might be faking the journey a little bit because we have to, have to, have to get people to look into us help us out like andrew david amy laura matty they help me out all the time i always ask for help i think asking mm -hmm. for help is one of the best things you can possibly do to yourself and a lot of people in spirituality find it so hard to reach out because their ego they want to be the best spiritual person there is if they tell them the truth about how they're feeling they're scared shitless they're going to judge them that's something we have to get rid of if you have friends mm -hmm and you're scared for shitless that they're going to judge you, then you don't have friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, That's a yeah. good one. Because let me yeah. tell you, the stuff I did, uh, 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 the stuff we divulge to each other, like, well, Amy doesn't care anymore. She has Holly Hobby. I have patches. Right? <laughs> we, we actually just say mm -hmm. shit. I don't care whether they judge me or not. Right? <laughs> you don't have friends. That's right. Right? If you have friends and you're scared that they're going to judge you, you do not have friends. Yeah. Okay. So in case in case you're wondering how the process of acknowledging the weight is, all you got to do is sit down, close your eyes for a moment. They are not taking you through a meditation and just observe the thoughts that are coming into your head randomly pushing you down. You got to get rid mm -hmm. of that stuff because when you're trying to get back to passion, you need a clean slate. Mm -hmm. You need to remember who you were. Who were you? Who are you actually? Because if you are some sad sack person and you think that that's that's who you are, then no, it that's not who you are. Okay, who are you? If I ask that question to you guys, actually, you know what? Maybe I should go up to some random dude on the street. Who <laughs> are you really? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> what like, do you want from me? What do you want yeah. from me? That's what like, I'm like, 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 here's 50 cents. Go buy yourself something to eat. No, okay. <laughs> who are you really? You listening to this broadcast. Who who were you? Who were you? And I'm talking to certain people in this broadcast. I see the chats filling up. Who were you really? I know who you present yourself as, but who are you really inside, right? David, can I yeah. can I quickly yeah. say something? So while you're saying this, everyone write in the chat who you think you are. Just from that question, write write in words who you think you are. See what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's a good. Uh, guys, write who you are. Tell me who you are. Who are you? Who are you at your core? I don't care if you have a bunch of labels attached to you like healer or or magician or or um, this or that or whatever. Uniform. Who are you to your core? I don't care about your labels. Don't don't give me your resume in the chat. Tell me who you <laughs> yeah. are. Essence. Ah, so we've there you there. go. Denisa Empath. Tell me who you are in essence, at your essence, at your core. Because here's the problem that people have. They can't answer that question. Honestly. There we go. So Denisa, yeah. Yes, you said hurt again. Yeah. Top, top, top. Well done for actually being truthful. That's yeah, what we need. That Truth. is. 
And Klaus is a magician. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the fucking one race. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting some real good ones in the chat. Yes. Yeah. 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 Guys. I am a loving Lillian. I am a loving mother. Mm. So Christine and Nicole, I am everything and nothing. I am silly, neurotic human. I am an interdimensional being of light and love. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for telling us who you are. Yeah. Because when it is that you meet someone, you need to know who that person is, okay? If I, if you ask somebody who you are, that person should be able to tell you. Let me give you some advice for those of y'all who are thinking about getting into passionate relationships. The first question on your first date should be, who are you really? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. If you are going on a date with somebody or you're meeting somebody for the first time, ask that person, who are you? Because you see, people are going to spout out a bunch of, a bun they're going to tell you their resume. Oh, yeah, I'm a corporate lawyer. I work on Wall Street. I, I <laughs> yes, make this yes. a lot of things. I drive this. I <laughs> My house is here and whatever else. That's not who you are. No. It isn't. It absolutely isn't. I am not interested in that shit, right? <laughs> I am interested in who are you really? And for those of you who are into transactional relationships where you care about the person's um, labels, uh, you'll be shooting yourself in the foot. Mm -hmm. That is not going to be a passionate relationship. When you ask somebody, who are you at your core? Who are you? Their answer tells you everything you need to know about their level of density. It absolutely does. Okay? But you... As a person who's asking the question, you better be able to answer that question yourself, okay? Because the person is going to ask you, so, um, now that I've told you all my labels and I, you know, corporate lawyer, work on Wall Street, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the person turns to you and says to you, so, and, uh, and you are? And then you give them an answer that actually means something. Yes. Yes. I am a I love soul, that. Right. I am here for experience. I am not perfect. I make mistakes, mm -hmm. right? I hurt and I feel. You give them that answer and then they look at you like, oh, shit, I... Yeah, I gotta go. Myself? I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have myself a live one here. You gotta think you're crazy, right? A live one. Right? <laughs> they gotta think you're crazy, right? They gotta think yeah. you're nuts, right? <laughs> <laughs> and when they think you're that, um, it tells you who you're dealing with. Because if somebody cannot take an answer like that, <laughs> if somebody cannot take an answer like that, then that person is not interested in you. That person is interested in your labels. Yes. Do you understand yes. what I mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I, I had that the other week with, a, I go skateboarding, I skateboard quite a bit. And there's a guy who um, I, w I met after and we had a drink afterwards. And um, I've known him for quite a while, but it was so nice to have a friend. He was actually asking me questions about myself and actually interested, you know, listening to what I had to say without judging me. And those are the people you want to find, friends who can actually listen to you, want to know much a lot mm -hmm. about you. And they're not judging you or they're not just wanting a label this, label that. And unfortunately, in this spiritual game, you deal with a lot of jealous people like David told me yesterday when we were on a chat yesterday, in this game, people are going to throw you down. The more you raise yourself, the more authentic you become. There'll always be those people who will try and smash you straight down. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality, unfortunately, we live in. Yeah, and that's their passion. Yeah. Their passion is yes. to take people down. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's, that's their passion. Yes. There's some, listen, there are some people who are made out of hater <laughs> material, okay? Yeah, and we've seen it in the spiritual community. We have seen it. We have seen it. Andrew and myself have been friends for a while now. Okay, this man and myself have had haters on a weekly basis. Okay, I opened the MPA drive this morning just to take a look inside there. Someone has written a message. Um, I, I, I wish I could have shared my screen on this one. Someone has written a message saying, 
<laughs> you evil people, right? <laughs> right? Y'all talking a bunch of, uh, of hogwash. There is no such thing as all this spiritual stuff, right? And that was it. That's his whole message. And I'm like, hmm, <laughs> what sh how should I deal with this? Anyway, I, I dealt with it by um, sending him um, uh, details to one of the products in Andrew's shop, you know, living the mystical di life daily. So I hope that he... Um, <laughs> oh, right. I hope that he takes it up and, you know, puts the best <laughs> power and discovers a different kind of passion within himself. Guys, what are you, what, what are you talking about? Um, what are you talking about? discovering your passion and finding your passion how to ignite it once you clear the dross away you begin to realize who you are and once you realize who you are mm. you can move from there and say who do i want to be mm. it's like imagine which the, the future question, which is the next hard question that we're going to do this is therapy oh. for the entire internet now <laughs> yes we're doing a therapy we're doing a therapy show how many of you know who you want to be when you grow up T guys, and anybody want to mm, just write it into the chat? Who do you want to be? I know who you are in essence. Who do you want to be? Anybody want to like mm. venture something in there? Hmm. It's a it's a tough it's a tough one. Yeah. That really, who you want to be now? Well, who you want to be when you're younger? It's um, it's such a different thing on the spiritual path. Because I don't think I want to be anyone. I just want to be me yeah, in the I moment. I just said that. Yeah. Ex experiencing this, enjoying life, not taking things too seriously. And uh, a lot of people yeah. always want, want and want and want and never actually realize what they've got and what's inside of them and how they can work with that. Uh, so we've got a few. Yeah. I want to be grounded, confident, my best self. Mm -hmm. A water healer, but I don't know how. Mm. My ancient future multi-dimensional self. So inside of those answers that you are putting inside there lies where your passion should start igniting. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The spark. Yeah. Inside those answers, who do you want to be? Even if you just want to be, mm -hmm. beingness is your passion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beingness yes. is your passion. And so anything that is not beingness at this particular point in time, throw it off <laughs> immediately. Hmm. Oh, to bring joy and laughter to me and others. Lillian, you should be on the show. <laughs> why, why is Lillian not on the show? Right, anyway, right. You get her in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So guys, look, honestly, anything that is not who you want to be, expel it with mm -hmm. expedition, okay? Right, expel it and begin it uh, and expel it with, um, how should I say, um, extreme discrimination, okay? Meaning that if your passion is popsicles, we're not eating ice cream, okay? <laughs> because we're going to popsicleness. That's where we're going. Mm. That's the road that we're going on. And once you take take the first step on that road, believe me when I tell you, that's where you're going. Okay. For those of you who are who don't know what you want to be, and a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't. It's because there's a whole bunch of things clogging you up. Okay. We have to talk about spiritual constipation here. We absolutely do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> we have to talk about spiritual constipation. Constipation. There are a lot of people who are spiritually constipated. What does that look like? Spiritually constipated looks like there is a invisible barrier such that the barrier is actually felt in the mind whenever it is that you come to do something. You say, oh, you know what? I am disciplined. So I'm going to put my altar up and I'm going to do a ceremony to the moon. As you get to do the ceremony to the moon, there's an invisible barrier that's inside here. That stops. Mm -hmm. It's like a blockage that you can't get past. 
y'all know what I am talking about. If y'all have ever experienced it, it's a wall that's inside there. So you do the actions, but your heart isn't in it. Mm -hmm. Your heart isn't in it, and that spiritual barrier could be doubt. It could be any a number of things. Okay? So there's a question I want to ask the audience as well. Now you're talking about this, David, is close your eyes and ask your heart. Instead of speaking with your head, actually ask your heart what it wants. And this, so many people find this so hard to do, to actually speak to their own heart. So many people go through the head as they're talking or as they're thinking. So I'd like you to ask it, um, yourself and focus on your heart and ask the heart what it wants. Allow the heart to be present and see what comes right. up for people. You may yeah. have a completely different answer than you did before. And a lot of people can't make the, the recognition between the heart and the brain. Who's talking? What? Am I actually really wanting this? And there's so, there's so many disconnections there. And in psychic surgery, I see it all the time. I'm just removing garbage from people. That's all I'm doing. Like David said, clearing the shit out of people. So the spirit can actually come in like a river. If you see people, someone clogged up, just imagine a river flowing through someone and seeing twigs, sticks, parasites, things just stuck. And it's just all about removing that and being responsible. So I see yeah. all the time, stuff like that. And I'd like to add to that is um, trust that what your heart says to you. If this is not a practice that you do, you have to trust that. Ah, I used to have exercises because I used to teach um, those kinds of yoga classes where people needed to reconnect. Okay. Mm -hmm. The heart center. You want to know one of the best ways to do that. Um, get yourself a co-regulating partner. Right. Sit cross-legged back to back and let the spines connect to each other. If you guys can visualize this, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Let the skin contact, okay? Let the skin contact. Why are you backing each other? Because nothing else is getting in the way. No, no, she has really nice tits. No, none of that shit is getting <laughs> in the way. That's why you're sitting back to back, okay? You're sitting back to back because you're not looking into the individual's eyes. You're just doing a co-regulation. Okay? And that co-regulation is a harmonization between the individuals, right? In such a way that the purpose becomes aligned. Okay? Mm. But that's just for relationship. If you are an individual and you're trying to contact your heart center again, because when you're sitting back to back, this is what happens for those of you who don't know, who've never done this exercise before. If you've oh. never done this exercise before, yes, that. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. That is a core regulation exercise. This is what happens. When you first sit back to back, nothing. You feel nothing because you are dense. But if you sit there long enough, what happens is that you begin to feel the person's heartbeat through your own body. You begin, and if you sit there long enough, you begin to feel the, the, the flow of blood. This is a circuit that you're trying to connect. Okay? It is a circuit that you are trying to connect. It is a co-regulation circuit. This stuff is useful. For those of you who are out of sync with your partners, go do that now. Like, do it now. While you're listening to the show, do it now. <laughs> Don't wait. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I'll be back. I'll be back. For the who <laughs> know you? Okay. Right. For, those, for those of you who do not have partners and you're just trying to feel your heart center and so on, then the Reiki uh, methodology is uh, is ideal. And this is what it looks like. It looks like this. Mm -hmm. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, let the, the chest rise, let the chest fall, let the, the um, feeling come in and come out, connect with your heart. The pressure that you put with your hands on, that ch on your chest, the respiration, the inhalation, the exhalation, that will clear out a lot of the blockages that you have. It is a self-healing process, okay? And it's right there in Reiki. It's inside psychic surgery, I suspect. Yes, it is. So when you're doing it on yourself, right? 
Yeah. It's it's an it's an every healing system. That thing connects every healing system. Healer, heal thyself before you heal anybody else. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that can ignite your passion, right? It will because it's clearing the dross out. And look, yeah. people don't want to look. I, this is what kills me about people. Somebody would sit down on sit down and watch a television ad. They'll buy their um, Revlon body wash right? They'll do their purification things. They're doing nitty. They're pouring water into their nose and so on. And you're still a walking garbage can. Okay? You're still a walking garbage can of spiritual and energetic dross, right? You got to do the spiritual hygiene. You got to clean yourself out or else passion is not good. To have. You can't have a fire when you have a bunch of blankets over it. No. Actually, you can, depending on whether the blankets are filled with gasoline. Never mind. My mind just went. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Like, you don't have a fire and have a bunch of blankets over. You take the blankets out. You absolutely do. A lot of people do not know. They don't want to be soft anymore. Nobody wants to be soft anymore. Everybody wants to be this. I can deal with the world because that's what COVID did to y'all. It made y'all hard. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. And there's wow, like, no. so I remember a story of this person who rang me and she was going to come on one of my psychic surgery trainings. Um, and she went off and did her own spiritual stuff for a while. She runs events, loads of them. But I could see that she was so passionate. She forgot to ground herself all the time. And she was a very ungrounded person, even though she was doing a lot. She was very ungrounded. And those are the type of people where parasites, entities love to haunt. Mm -hmm. And so a very important mm. grounding passion you've got to be in the body you've got to actually be here in the now to actually feel passion with because a lot of people are just constantly out the body and i remember she talked to me and i felt this really nasty energy in her spine i was like holy fuck there's something feeding all the way up your spine as soon as i talked to her i was like holy shit <laughs> so with with it, it's responsibility it comes down to if you're passionate and you're on this journey you have to learn grounding skills being present in the body, listening to the body, observing what's in you. Pr uh, projections are a huge thing what people aren't aware of. When mm -hmm. people project at you, especially family members, it acts as dirt, dense energy, and it can make people anxious. It can make people worry, overthink. It can actually kick them out of the body. So these are some tools what we're going over in the show to help you, which have helped all of us over in the past. Yes, grounding mm -hmm. is a hell of a thing. I have a story to give, which is not a nice story. Um, when I was younger and I was teaching yoga teachers, uh, we had one of those ungrounded people, very airy fairy, right? But I was in an island where they sell cassava um, cakes. For those of you who've ever eaten a cassava cake, I'll explain what <laughs> it does. Okay. <laughs> I fed her. Because Dale likes cake. cake. So if you yes. have a cake, right? Yes. It, it looks really have small, right? Yeah. So I, I, I thought it, it's a, I needed to ground her really quickly, right? So I, it looks really small, right? It's just a little flat bread thing, right? But then you eat it, and when it gets into your stomach, it inflates. Oh, God. <laughs> and keeps you in a very static position for a while, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, it keeps you in a very static position. For those of you who've ever eaten that thing, it actually slows you down. Right. So if you if you have any airy fairy family, no, not I'm not going to suggest that. Right. It will ground them for sure. That is external grounding through nutrition. And my su my suggestion. If you guys are the guys that are floating about the place, entities will grab you. The grounding is necessary, all right? And one of the things that a lot of people live in and they don't realize is a constant psychic attack from other people. You could walk down the street right now, okay? I guarantee you that somebody is going to do some sort of psychic attack on you, especially if you're a woman right they're going to do this parasitical thing and say oh look at her mm, that's a psychic attack for those of you who are watching for you guys that are watching this thing if you are looking at a woman and directing that kind of phallic energy in her direction that would be a psychic attack. <laughs> phallic yeah. energy. 
<laughs> that would be a psychic attack for those of you and women feel it and they're under constant psychic attack right depending on how they look okay yes. there are some women however that ingest that energy and revel in it which never is a good thing because that will twist you up inside okay but generally speaking stop um psychically attacking people i long for the day i wish like i had a magic wand where you could just swing the magic wand and people would just be people not labels not a bunch of shit around mm -hmm. them interacting with shit because mm -hmm. it's not real people act re interacting with real people it's not people who are true people at their core are interacting it's just shit interacting with other shit you go to yes. like I was invited to an event, right? Recently, I went to the event. There are a bunch of people with a bunch of labels around them, a bunch of shit that's, that that they have going on, and they're interacting with each other. And it's a sort of, it's a sort of <sighs> unclean kind of interaction, energetic interaction. When you have that stuff going on, you you just want to leave the place. Does that make sense to you guys? Yep. Yes, it does. If you are under constant psychic attack, you go home. All of that is built up over time. You have to clean it when you go home. Don't just fall asleep with it. It's going when you wake mm -hmm. up. It's going there. Okay, process it. Let it out. And can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. So, David, I know a month ago or so, I don't know, we were just chatting and I was just chatting about, I don't know, whatever my day was. <laughs> and we were talking and then you said, uh, you need to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm like, what? You know, I do all my, you know, okay. So what happened was I wrote my own daily protection prayer and it came out like nothing like what what was this thing everything that we talked about that you certain words you said it was like it just flowed out so i do that every day the daily protection prayer yes and, and a lot of people need to do that yeah yes. like it it doesn't have to be long it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be it just has to feel right in your heart you know you and then i an armoring yeah yeah for those yeah, of you who don't do any kind of protection on yourself Listen, even Christians do protection on themselves, okay? It's Psalm 23. Remember, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm -hmm. Even Christians yes. do that, yes. right? Yeah. Christians are doing it. You're not doing it. The Christians don't like a lot of y'all. Just so that we're clear, okay? <laughs> so let me see if I get this straight. You get a psychically attacked and you have no protection. You're walking out there. Listen, even if you, you, you just say to yourself, today... I today I heal myself. Even if you just say those words, mm -hmm. you gotta say the words. Yeah. Right? It's a different attitude. When you put your mind in a different space, different things happen to you. Mm -hmm. And right? let's go, let's quickly, as you're connect connecting what you're saying, David and Amy, is the word empath, and someone said they're an empath in the chat. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is a big problem with spirituality. And I've been there myself where you, you you label yourself as an empath, but you're basically telling the universe that you're allowed to take on everyone's energy and you're open to psychic attack. That's all you, unfortunately, that's all you're doing when you go into empathy. As, as Andrew says many times, empathy is a very low form of mechanics, low vibrational mechanic. And unless, of of course, things, unless, of course, the empath is attached to someone else, then it's kind of useful. Yes, yeah, yes. And <laughs> for, for my growth, my biggest growth was saying no in my auric field to external projections, hardening myself that I'm not allowing people in my frequency anymore because I was a zealot, I was an empath. I was literally letting people into my brain, letting people into my spinal column. But you have to have at least the energy, like David said, if it's something so small of saying no, not coming in this field, this is my sacred space. Mm -hmm. I am, I am being responsible for who I am because a lot of people take on so many people's shit. Like when I started doing these shows, I remember speaking to Andrew and I was like, why do I just have all this weirdness feeling to me? And he goes, you're not doing due, due diligence of 
clearing yourself from projections from shows. And I'm like, projections from shows? He goes, yes. You get collective projections all the time with people watching, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So you have to be aware of stuff like that. Someone may be projecting on you or someone may be jealous of you. And that can, if you don't, if you allow that shit to come in, it can stick in you for a long, long time. So I have this idea, right? Because to be quite honest with you, what Andrew, the advice that Andrew gave you is the best advice. And I'll tell you why, right? Because we have people in the show who may not like us, who may like us or whatever. And one of the best defenses that I have is my sense of humor. And I'll tell you why. Because whenever somebody says some nasty shit to me, I find it exceedingly funny. <laughs> okay? Like the troll. Like the Zoom troll. Yeah. In the last yeah, like the Zoom troll. I, <laughs> I want to have a, 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 a troll show where we let all the trolls in. <laughs> okay? Everybody who doesn't like us, everybody that has some nasty shit to say, let them all in <laughs> and have some real fun. Okay? <laughs> right have some real fun and let's start flipping frequencies because the the thing is when somebody says something nasty to you right you got to see that the humor in it like honestly i went to the last time i had a negative re interaction and this is not a good thing um don't judge me bro the last time i had a negative re interaction was at um a canadian tire store and this uh, this guy is pushing the trolley, right? And he's coming from around the corner, not looking where he's going. And he asks, he almost bags it to my trolley, and he says, "Why don't you watch where you're going?" But while he was saying that, I realized that he had like four front teeth missing. And I said, "You got bigger problems <laughs> than me." <laughs> I didn't tell him what the bigger problems were. I just said that you have bigger problems than I do. And I just kept it pushing. Okay? Now, I didn't burst out laughing in the individual's face. But I just realized, my man, you can't have a bad attitude. Right? Life fix, get the dental plan for us in order for us before you start giving people bad attitude okay so when you are looking at people and they're spewing nasty shit at you there's a reason why they're doing that and you just have to isolate what it is right you just have to isolate it and unfortunately and i say unfortunately don't judge me bro it becomes extremely funny when you isolate why that person is spewing negative shit at you like amy as an example you had <laughs> negative interactions you've yes. had negative interactions and i find that funny as hell because <laughs> the reason why somebody will try to um try to have a um negative idea about you right is because well you're not doing what that person wants mm. true narcissist yeah true yeah yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? And and Dale, the reason why people will attack you is because you have something that they don't have. Mm -hmm. They they will attack you. So there are people in the chat. I, I will really want to let in the trolls and let them have <laughs> we'll have right? to use like, 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 if, if there was someone like this, invite all the trolls in and let it let them get it off their chest. I would <laughs> I would die laughing. I think like there are times when we've had enemies even recently try to attack us online and stuff like that. And Andrew can tell you, he called me and said, David, did you read this or did you hear this? And I'm like, uh, no. And then I go read it and I listen, I almost choked myself <laughs> laughing. <laughs> All right. I almost choked myself laughing because this is funny. A lot of the stuff that people will attack you with is funny. You're just not seeing it yet. You want to think about passion. You want to talk about healing yourself and so on. Develop a sense of humor. Yeah. And one of my senses, uh, one of my passions is laughing. I love to laugh at stuff. I laugh at the most inappropriate things a lot, a lot of the times. Okay, <laughs> I'm telling that straight. I'll, I, I, I'm outing my own self. I'm telling on my own self. I laugh at inappropriate shit all the time. 
Because <laughs> at the end, everything is just funny. And and that laughter, David, is alchemizing dense energy as well. Yeah. So it's allowing the dense energy not to not to be around you or not penetrate you. And the amount of alchemy which is in a laugh is it's beautiful, isn't it? When you when you're in the moment and it's a bit serious, and all of a sudden you look at each other and start laughing. There's, it's a very <laughs> special moment. It this morning, <laughs> this morning I went out of my house. My car has a key fob attached to it. Okay. <laughs> I get to my front door. I'm pressing the key fob, wondering why the front door isn't opening. I had to laugh at myself. <laughs> like, what is wrong with you, David? How are you this stupid? Right, you, got, you have to laugh at these things. Yeah. Right, I'm like, what the hell just happened to me? All right, I am pressing the, pressing the key fob. I'm like, this shit isn't working. What's wrong with you? <laughs> And I uh, press the key form to my front door. So your brain does these things. You gotta laugh at yourself. You gotta laugh at other things as well. You know, there's laugh at inappropriate shit. I laugh at other people. I laugh at myself as well. We had and we so, had penis jokes going on for I think it was about seven months in one of the chats. <laughs> the phallus <laughs> jokes kept, kept. Yes. <laughs> people throwing phallic energy at you, <laughs> and women are usually at the brunt of that. Okay. <laughs> women are usually at the brunt of that but let's uh, let's not say it women also attack other people as well the show it was about passion and you want to ignite passion find yourself clean yourself let me put mm -hmm. this in the correct order <laughs> acknowledge the problem clean yourself find yourself decide who you want to be right and throw everything else off okay and make sure that you maintain a protection around you is where we were going just to summarize mm -hmm. what we said so far make sure you meant um establish a protection around you which could look like getting friends like us <laughs> who's yeah. going to tell you who's going to tell you without a second thought right <laughs> hi you have a bunch of garbage that you you walking around with. Get rid of it, because <laughs> let me tell you, and this is where an empath becomes very useful. Okay, for those of you who don't have any empath friends, find one. Find <laughs> one. <laughs> we should do a show, the empath searcher. <laughs> if for those of you who don't have any empath friends, find one. Would you like to know why? Because an empath will show you your blind spots absolutely because they can feel right so even though you're dense and you can't feel what's going on with you the empath is going to feel yeah it's all about the strategy man it's all about the strategy <laughs> right because the empath is going to feel that you because you you could try to hide things from yourself you might be in denial but you can't deny it when it's showing up on the empath who's outside of yourself so empaths are useful <laughs> they, may, they may not be useful to themselves and empath walks into a bar, right? <laughs> but they're useful to everybody else in the spiritual community. They are, right? Because there's some there are blind spots that you don't see, some anger issues that you have. You are not going to see them. The empath will. And the empath's reactions are going to tell you, if the empath is vocal, what you're missing. Get yourself empath friends, okay? useful <laughs> right. what about a combination of an empath and someone who's got a demon attached to them an empath walks in the bar and sees that person and goes right in them and starts <laughs> that, is a, that, is, that is a mathematical equation right there <laughs> can you imagine can you imagine that you are like you you are you, you have an empath like who's a demon empath oh jeez oh jeez no oh jeez no god <laughs> when you are talking about um opening and allowing yourself to open to the universe and so on and you're yearning for universal connection you're yearning for all of those things and so on that passion that you have uh make sure you clean yourself but honestly the part the last part that i just told you about get yourself some empath friends who could tell you <laughs> who could tell you yeah you're not clean so, yet so, david right? why would you find these empath friends so let, let's have a definitely scenario. not in a bar that's what <laughs> <damn> <laughs> <true>. <laughs> 
<laughs> what, what event would there be at? Let's try and think of one. A, a uh, one. You want to know how to find empaths? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, how do we find them? Go into a crowded area and then they shout really loud all of a sudden. Okay? You can see the empaths clearly. <laughs> okay? All right? If you are not particularly psychic or whatever else and you want to isolate who the empaths are in the room, change the condition of the room or the energy in the room and you know who the empath is immediately. <laughs> okay, it may be this. I don't know. Um, get yourself one of those little honker things and squeeze oh. it. <laughs> I'll see how the people in the room react because the empath is going to be the one with more adrenaline running through them, even after they've re they they figured out what the uh, what the noise is. Okay, right? That's how I find my empaths. Okay, no, that's not that's not how I find my. So sorry. <laughs> Right, <laughs> that's how you find empaths, and honestly, the empath is going to be the one that is going to be the more useful to you if it is that you are if it is that you have blind spots, okay? Right, and in return, because there has to be reciprocity, when you meet an empath, go out of your way to protect that empath. You hear me? Because <laughs> empaths are the most put upon in the entire spiritual compu community and y'all know this <laughs> what a show guys wow. this has been so fun okay so we want to yeah we want to do two things before we leave the first thing that we want to do is um somebody asked when is the ai seminar it's at the end of this uh month i think uh, that's what Andrew told me. And if you guys scan that barcode, that is a form that you need to fill out. I appreciate all of you who have wrote me emails, right? <laughs> and I had an email failure. Yet another thing to laugh at. The guy who is creating AI tools had an email failure. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. The irony. <laughs> so... If you, yeah, you guys can laugh at that a little bit later. So yeah. guys, scan the barcode and um, fill out that form and we will absolutely get back to you all. That is a promise, right? That barcode will lead you to a form where there is no email nonsense attached to it. <laughs> and yeah, it's a surety. So sign up for that stuff. It is going to be in your favor. A lot of y'all have a lot of stories inside y'all that we would love to hear. Uh, forget about the we. Mm. I definitely would love to hear the story. <laughs> if you're an empath, I would sign up to the form. Do it now. Do it now. Right? Especially if you're an empath, scan that barcode. Right? <laughs> How are they going to scan it? Are they going to project themselves into it, David? <laughs> right? Because I want to hear your story. For sure, I want to hear your stories. Um, yeah, that's it. that's it, Dale. I'll pass it over to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, someone actually asked in the chat, um, we are not all psychic surgeons. Do you have some tips on spiritual cleansing? I'm guessing, Lillian, you've listened to the show for quite a while because I've seen you a lot. Uh, there's so many hundreds of episodes of Andrew's teachings, Talking Sick shows, which give you the idea of how to do that free of charge. Uh, one of them, obviously, would be using salt going to see a healer, going to see a psychic surgeon. Also as well, which um, which I'm going to let you all know, is I've got a psychic surgery uh, training coming up. So if you want to learn the actual skills of going into the body, perceiving what the what the, um, the dense energy is or the projection or what else it is, parasite, whatever's their entity and so on, uh, I'm offering psychic surgery elevation, elevation training on the 17th and 18th of November. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, this will also come with half an hour of a psychic surgery session as well with me. So if you want to learn the, the mastership of what it takes to actually know thyself, do the work on yourself, be able to clear the body, clear the field, learn what a sacred space means, living in your vessel, living and making it sacred, making sure it's clean, um, I invite you to join the psychic surgery course. And we're going to be doing future treatments, backwards in time treatments, self treatments, and how to do it on other people. So, yeah, thank you. Mm. Yeah, and um, for those, uh, Amy, you want to go first? 
Okay. So I have a show called Unscripted where I have a guest on and I ask them one question. It's fun. It's actually fun questions that I have. They're safe. There's nothing, you know, I might ask you, who are you really? That could be a good question. I might stick in there. <laughs> but anyways, if you would like to be a guest, just message me in Messenger or Pink Moon Lodge podcast at gmail.com. Okay. Beautiful. And uh, for myself, I have some very exciting news. We're launching the uh, Canadian Combined Healing Systems up here on November the 1st. That's the best th news ever. Right. Um, so the Can my Canadian peeps, I'm letting you all know that. Um, with regard to other exciting news, that form that you guys are filling out, um, somebody asking the in show, what is this? It's for the AI Writers Group. And so when you guys are filling out that form, you're going to join the AI Writers Group. And also go look on Facebook for um, a page called Onexa, O-N-E-X-X-A. Join that page because what we are doing... Uh, my software company is going to be giving you guys a significant advantage and not just a little advantage, a significant advantage in the business world. <coughs> um, so go join that page because that page is going to, we're going to be doing um, software giveaways. We're going to be doing all sorts of um, giveaways. Um, Andrew has convinced me to do a special for people in this community so go find it. We intend to make a difference. We are not halfway. For those of you who are going to be at that healing, um, Combined Healing UK in January, for those of you who are thinking about doing it, don't think, do it, because I'll be there. And mm -hmm. like, I could get to ask you questions like, who are you really? <laughs> ask them at the start and ask them at the end. That would be funny, wouldn't it? At the start of the system, who are you to the yeah. end? Who are you? Yes. Who do you it's want gonna... to be, really? Yeah. Right? While, while, you're, uh, while you're on the mat looking up, like I'll just be looking down at you. Who do you want to be? Really? <laughs> All right, yeah. guys. Well, that's it. Get Can I just to say, you. David, Amy, Thank you so much. What a fun show. And for all of those commenting as well, it's been really yeah. fun and what a great topic. So we'll see you next week, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.